I say to you, we march. Don't panic and remember that we must remain true to nonviolence. I'm asking everybody in the line. If you can't be nonviolent, don't get in it. Right. If you can't accept blows without retaliating, don't get in the line. If you can accept it out of your commitment to nonviolence. You will somehow do something for this nation that may well be it. With a peaceful philosophy and ability to mobilize supporters through eloquent and emotional speeches, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. found his place in the civil rights movement. His truth is marching on. It was a Baptist minister's preachings for the power of love that inspired demonstrators to turn their energy toward nonviolent resistance. Though not passive, they were committed to behaving nonviolently when approached or provoked. With a desire to participate on their own, many of the nation's youth initiated student-led demonstrations and developed new strategies of nonviolent protest. At a segregated lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina, four students began a grassroots movement by defying the law. Known as sit-ins, the movement grew to 70,000 as black and white students across the South took turns sitting at lunch counters whose policy was to serve whites only. This passive resistance to remain seated until served, resistance against years of racial segregation and oppression, led to the desegregation of lunch counters in more than 200 cities. This act is an example of civil disobedience, a peaceful way to object to a law considered unjust. A pattern was emerging within the civil rights movement. It became apparent that the simple presence of new laws wouldn't be enough to assure equality. Efforts from both black and white communities were critical for this goal to become reality. Unfortunately, it didn't happen without bloodshed. As nonviolent protests spread and resistance to desegregation continued, the two forces collided, sometimes violently, and once again, children were on the front lines. <laughs>